Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. As you all can see, it's snowing. A winter storm is on the way, and a winter storm warning was just issued. At the same time, there is a high wind advisory in place for winds up to 50 miles per hour. Right now, it's pretty windy. It's not 50 though, not even close. Maybe 25, maybe 30 at the most. This is my bag. And inside of this, I have everything that I need for this adventure. And just about everything here is military surplus. Some very, very cool pieces of gear that I'm excited to use for this trip. Because it's military surplus, and it's so freaking heavy, <laughs> I'm not hiking with this pack. I am here at Lone Wolf Mountain, and let me tell you, I'm excited to be here. This is the tent. The most expensive, one of the rarest military tents in the entire world. This is, without a doubt, a very special military tent. There are very few in the world like it. The tent has been set up. I'm basically going to unload my gear, get everything stowed inside. I'm going to turn off the camera for now because it's too difficult to try to film this. Uh, this stuff is really, really wet. What I need to do essentially is get everything unloaded, park the truck at the bottom of the mountain. Here at Lone Wolf Mountain, we're around 4,000 feet and it's just way too steep of a road. I have to park at the bottom if I plan to get out of here in a couple of days. heading off the mountain now and let me tell you it is coming down the winter storm warning doesn't actually go into effect until midnight right now it's 11 11 actually it's definitely starting to stick it's starting to build up some it's either get the truck off the mountain now or basically the truck stays here until everything melts because this road is super super steep Now I have to hike half a mile to the top. I've got some sleet building up now. All right finally inside of the tent and I think it basically stopped snowing let's take a look no it's still snowing this tent is wild there's no doubt about it this is made from a very special type of Gore-Tex it's not your everyday average Gore-Tex by any means this was developed with the United States government you cannot go out and just purchase a product made from this and that partially explains why this tent is so expensive For now, I am basically going to get ready, hop in bed here. It's almost midnight. And I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm excited to see how much snow we have in the morning. 
and to see how much snow comes tomorrow. This should be a pretty good storm, but my faith in meteorologists and forecasts is very low, as you all know. If the forecast is wrong for this trip, I will tell you all a dirty joke. How does that sound? Why don't I go ahead and tell you all the forecast, okay? So winter storm warning in effect from 12 a.m. tonight until 7 a.m. Tuesday. Today is Sunday right now. Heavy snow expected above 3,500 feet. We're at 4,000 feet right here. Total snow accumulations ranging from 4 to 10 inches with locally higher amounts above 4,500 feet. So winds getting as high as 50 miles per hour. Sounds about right. By Tuesday morning, we'll see how much snow that we have. Again, I am not expecting a whole lot. Everyone, good night. See you all in the morning. All right, good morning, everybody. It is roughly 8.30, and the snow amounts are impressive. Impressively awful. <laughs> it is snowing, it's pretty, but there's not much out there really. Uh, most of the snow that came down last night was melting. It was right at the freezing, so yeah. It's icy, but there's not much snow, and that's okay. I'm sure that it will snow throughout the day and the night. Slept great, the sleeping bag, super warm. If anybody is interested in a good synthetic fill sleeping bag, that's military grade. Check out the Everly Stock Revly bag. I have a review on that. This is an awesome bag. It really is. Super warm inside of this. The tent did a great job. As you can see with the camera, it's not fogged up. And that's because of the Gore-Tex. The Gore-Tex really does a fantastic job when it comes to breathability, especially with this being a special type of Gore-Tex. As you may be able to hear, it is very windy. It is snowing a little bit, but the wind is definitely the most impressive aspect. Now, at some point in time last night, I heard a pretty good crash. It sounded like a tree came down, but um, yeah, definitely been a windy, windy night. It is cold, but it's not freezing by any means. It's in the 20s. I'm not sure exactly where, but it's not terrible. There are numerous things that I want to work on today. One of them being I want to collect a bunch of firewood, I want to split some wood, and I also want to set up some sort of protective shelter, a surrounding wall and a covered area, so that tonight I could sit around a warm fire and not get blown away, essentially. I want to sit there and enjoy the heat, so I'm going to make that happen. First things first, I'm going to have coffee and breakfast, and I'm going to do that from right here. Too windy to get out right now. I think I'll just set up the stove right in front of the door. Tell you this little bit of heat here is amazing <laughs> it really can make all the difference in the world there's quite a bit of moisture in the air humidity because of the snow that's coming in and that makes it feel colder than it really is then factor in the wind and without a doubt it's chilly it's chilly Now for this adventure, I have some MREs, but for breakfast, I'm having good old fashioned oatmeal. Why is that? Well, that's because I don't want to have Mexican style chicken stew for breakfast. <laughs> there are crackers and stuff like that, but why not have a good meal and then head off? 
The other MRE that I have is chicken with noodles. <laughs> I am pretty sure that's Taster's Nasty right there. <laughs> it sure looks it. Hopefully it's military grade. Cheers everyone, cheers. Mm -hmm. Even military instant coffee is still good. Coffee's coffee. In my opinion, there are people who disagree with that, such as Susie. <laughs> Quite a few of you all do too. I'm still waiting for someone to get Taster's Nasty as a tattoo. Who is going to be the first? <laughs> I know someone will. Come on. Someone's going to. Oatmeal time. I like eating oatmeal every single day. Mm hmm. When you are out backpacking and camping, what do you have for breakfast? Does it change or do you like to stick with one thing? You know everyone, I love conditions like today and in truth it doesn't matter if it's one inch of snow on the ground or ten. I like the cold, I like the wind, I like the snow. This is without a doubt my favorite time of year. And as far as winter goes, it's just getting started. That's pretty exciting. My plan is to get out in as many of these storms as possible. You could do trips like this as well. All you have to do is prepare. And <laughs> if you could do that, you will have awesome stories to share with all your pals and friends and family. Like all the time, you know, I'm talking to my buddies, I'm like, hey, what'd you do this weekend? Well, they did, you know, whatever they did. Luke, what'd you do? Well, I was hunkered down on top of this mountain. It was super windy. It was snowing, it was wet, and I was having breakfast inside of my tent, and then I set up a tarp shelter <laughs> so I could have a fire that night. Yeah. It is time to get out and face the conditions. All right, here we are. There's the tent. Snowing a little bit. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Last night during a strong wind gust, I heard a tree come down. Right here it is. Take a look. This locust fell, took out this tree, and is laying against that one up there.
step one of my wind block has been completed. This is essentially my wind wall. Now I'm going to take another tarp. I'm going to attach it here and stretch it out this way. That way I have this essentially right angle of protection. I can sit inside of it, have my fire over here, and actually enjoy it. I'm blocking the wind from all directions. So the heat will actually come to me instead of just being blown away. Now, if I wanted to, if I wanted to, I could even take another tarp because I brought three just in case. I could stretch one over the top, which would be pretty awesome actually. I might just do that. <laughs> I've taken the last 40 minutes to set this up and it is pretty darn awesome. Let me show it to you. So here's my setup. Two walls, a roof, and it is just about 100% windproof. This has really worked out well. Now of course it's not 100% sealed up and that's okay. I'm not building a house here. I'm building a shelter essentially to block the wind and to really more than anything protect the camera so I could film. I have done that. It's very secure. It is easily handling wind gusts over 45 miles an hour. wind snow block has been set up let's head back to the top of the mountain here I'll talk about the tent for just a moment and then I need to start gathering some firewood so without a doubt this is not going to be a 10 inch snowstorm so be prepared for a dirty joke at the end of this video This was designed for the Special Forces and it is still in use today. Now, as you all can see, I have this white cover over my tent. And that's because this tent was designed to be used in any sort of situation and environment. These covers allow you to adapt the tent to all sorts of environments. This one would be an Arctic snowy environment, but there are covers for woodland, for desert, and so on. This is a four season tent, a true four season tent. It can withstand strong winds and heavy snow. Looks like a snow squall is coming in. As it stands now, I have enough firewood for tonight. Ah, it is snowing a little bit. It's not too heavy. It's almost more like a sleet than snow. <laughs> the wind is the worst part. It's super windy, but luckily these walls are doing an amazing job of blocking the wind. I am just about 100% protected right here. It's amazing, really. Lunchtime. MRE. We have chicken and noodles with vegetables and sauce. It really doesn't sound that bad. I don't think I've had this one. Uh, wheat snack bread. Condiments pouch with coffee, which I definitely need. Nut raisin mix. Beverage based powder. Tropical punch. I think I'll skip. Strawberry jam. Hell yeah. And peanut butter. Oh, wow. Peanut butter and jelly. Oh yeah, that's where I'm going right now. Swiss military stove. 
Those are awesome. And they are refillable. With sterno. Essentially, you light it up, you put that on top, pot goes, and you're ready to go. To make lighting easier, get rid of the burnt part. That right there is some very dense bread. Hmm? It's more like, like a Pop-Tart with nothing in it. By itself, it's not terrible. So the question is, which is better, creamy or chunky peanut butter? I can go ahead and answer that for you. Creamy. This is more like, I don't know, syrup. Everyone, peanut butter jelly town with some really dense, thick, odd bread. Pop-tart bread. That's good. But the truth is, you can put peanut butter and jelly on a shoe and it would be fantastic. So, coffee time, everyone. And this smells like, <laughs> smells like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why, but it does. It doesn't smell good. It's a different type of coffee than the other MRE. It doesn't taste bad, but it smells awful. <laughs> Instant coffee cannot go bad. That's a fact. Actually, I'm not sure about that. Maybe it is. <laughs> Here's an idea for a YouTube channel. How about someone who only opens and eats MREs? What do you think? Heck, there probably is a channel like that already. I personally don't get to watch YouTube very much. I am friends with a few YouTubers, but in most cases, I don't know who's out there. People are constantly asking me, hey, do you know so-and-so? Do you watch so-and-so? And I always feel kind of like a jerk. Like, no, I don't. And it's not that they're not popular or whatever. I just don't watch it. <laughs> I don't have the time. Tell you all, this is quite the setup here. I love doing stuff like this. It is so much fun. And it's storms like this where military surplus really does shine. Oftentimes people write in, ask me, hey, should I buy this military pack? It's my first backpack ever. For that individual, I always ask them a very blunt question. Do you fully realize what you're getting into when you buy military surplus when it comes to backpacking. You can use military surplus for backpacking, do not get me wrong, but you're going to Wait Town, pure on Wait Town. Just about every single military product is super, super heavy. So you really have to decide, like, is that something that you want to do? Using military gear, yeah, it looks cool. I love military gear, but I can't begin to tell you all how many times people have contacted me and they say, hey, I'm looking to go lightweight. <laughs> I have this military pack or this military whatever, but I need to go lighter. And that's because if you want to be in the outdoors, if you really want to go a good distance, you will need to go lightweight. Smells pretty good, everyone. I have to be honest. Chicken and noodles with vegetables and sauce. Everyone, oh yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty good. I think I will add a little bit of salt to it, though. As you can see here, I am slicing right in the center of this log. And when I do so, there's no way for this ax head to deflect and go this way or that way. I'm completely safe. Also, because of the angle, there's no chance of bounce back. I've been looking forward to this all day long. Still windy, getting colder, snowing now. Actual snow now, instead of sleet. You can hear a couple hundred feet above us, and it's roaring up there. Even with the snowstorm being disappointing, I've had such an amazing day. <laughs> it's been nice just to be out in the woods, to be out in the forest. Enjoying the sound of the snow alone is special. If I did this right, I'll have a nice fire. If I did this wrong, I'll be collecting more material. One match fire. How's everybody doing tonight? As for myself, doing great. Whew. That feels awesome. <laughs> I might actually be able to take some of this off here in just a minute. The heat is just radiating inside of here, almost like a whirlwind, really. It's getting hot now, less smoke. Yeah, it's nice. Really is. Now for tonight's dinner, we have Mexican style chicken stew and Santa Fe style rice and beans. I am definitely going to eat these together. I'm having to move my stump all the way to the back because I mean, it's gotta be 
<laughs> like 50 degrees in here. Maybe even warmer. <laughs> that doesn't sound like much, but when it's 29, 28 degrees outside and it's 50 here, it's a substantial difference. Now, when it comes to tonight's story, I want to talk about my daughter who is in the United States Navy. Now, her job I cannot talk about because I really know nothing about, but what she does is classified. I think really the topic of conversation for this video is that enlisting in the military, at least with the United States, can't comment about other countries. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. And it really does take the right type of person to simply hack it. Not only to make it through boot camp, but everything else. Suicide rates amongst the military is very, very high. I know where my daughter is stationed at. They've had, I want to say, four or five suicides in, like, in the last month or two months, something like that. Um, in fact, one of her close friends just killed himself. It's a very high-stress job that a lot of people just, I mean, you can't even wrap your head around what exactly is going on and the stress is involved. But um, anybody who has loved ones in the armed forces, my hat's off to you. No doubt about it. And Maddie, if you're watching this video, I want you to know that I love you. I'm so very proud of you. You're probably not watching this video because you have <laughs> way more important things to do than watch YouTube. Plus, she's living her life doing crazy stuff. You know how that is. Being young and crazy. That's how I was. I was young and crazy. <laughs> I never did anything when I was younger that would break the law. I mean, back then you would get away with a whole lot more. Let me put it this way. Back then it was just being mischievous and everybody thought it was funny. Now you would definitely, definitely get in trouble. <laughs> Times are different, that's for sure. Oh man, the crazy stuff that we would get into. And like I said before, just more funny than anything else. It didn't cause anybody harm or, you know, didn't, didn't do anything wrong, just funny. But anyways, getting off topic there. Uh, Maddie, I love you. I cannot wait to see you for Christmas. It's definitely been a while since I've seen her. She was not able to come down for Thanksgiving. She had too much going on. But, uh, yeah. Okay, that's a gamble. I hope that's good. <laughs> bon appetit, everyone. Let's see how this is. I poured something called pepper sauce all over it. <laughs> I hope it's good because uh, I'm not sure and I just did it. <laughs> Hopefully uh, mistakes weren't made, but uh, cheers everybody. Okay, it's awesome. It's incredibly hot. <coughs> Whew. That pepper sauce takes it to a 10. <coughs> but the flavor's good. But hot going in, hot coming out. <laughs> Hopefully tomorrow <laughs> when I'm back home. That's pretty damn good. That's good. It's snowing outside. It's fire, some good food, good friends. Life is good. Let's talk about some of the funny things that my brother and I did when we were younger. So this is high school age, I would say between 16 and 18. Like all of our buddies, everybody got their license at a different time. So anyways, one thing that we would do is constantly prank each other. And the truth is, our parents really paid the price for this more than we did. But it may start with something like forking someone's yard. Check this out, this is pretty funny. Jesse and I, we decided that we were going to fork our buddy Drew's yard, right? And if you're not familiar with that, you go to the grocery store, you buy a bunch of cheap plastic forks, jab them into the ground. Well, we bought like three or four boxes. and just, just put them all over the place, right? Well, Drew's dad was like high strung. I'm sure he still is actually, but. Anyway, so 
Jesse and I, we fork Drew's yard. Well, I can't let Jesse get away with that. So Drew and I, we decided that we were going to toilet paper Jesse's house. It wasn't so much his house, but like a tree in the front yard. Well, Drew and I didn't know that there was an ice storm coming that night. So we go over to <laughs> his house, <laughs> TP that tree, and then we just went home, went to bed, woke up, middle of an ice storm, I get a phone call from Jesse, right? <laughs> Imagine wet toilet paper that's frozen <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> uh, and his parents were mad. So incredibly mad. <laughs> that's pretty funny. God, that was good. We were always doing stuff like that. Some things I'm not going to talk about. Not that it's illegal or anything, just mischievous. Times are different. I mean, back then, you know, young people were expected to do crazy stuff. And truth is, we got away with it. And sometimes we were caught by the police and they let us go, no big deal. But times really are different. You can't do that stuff no more. Coyotes. Fairly close. My plan is to finish up dinner I'll bring you all back when I'm inside the tent. I'm going to just kick back, relax, enjoy the snow, the fire, the smoke, <coughs> and this hot pepper sauce. Woo! Hot. If you know somebody who served, somebody that's enlisted right now, make sure to talk to them, make sure to reach out to them often, just to make sure they're doing okay, because it is a high-stress job. They're going through a lot, so... Yeah. I'll see you guys later. Everyone, let's call it a night. Let the snow fall and the wind blow. It's snowing. <laughs> it's about freaking time. I have no idea what time it is. I do know it's time to kick back and relax for the evening. I have a book that I'm going to read. I'll pull it out here in a second. Okay. Am I concerned about doing that? No, not this time of year. Bears love mint, but there's no bears around. Otherwise, mint actually works as a pretty good deterrent for some animals, insects, and whatnot. My jacket is also my pillow. Shove that inside of my sleeping bag stuff sack. 
the Hunter. Originally, I saw the movie first, and I wanted to read the book, see what was different. I like watching the movies first, and then reading the books. <laughs> I do things backwards. All right, everyone, I am going to bed. I'll see you all in the morning. I can't wait to see how much snow we have on the ground. I'm guessing, like, an inch and a half. <laughs> Not even two. It doesn't really matter. Today's been a lot of fun. It has. But uh, we'll talk more in the morning. Good night. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, guys. Gals, good morning. Good morning. How'd everybody sleep? Yeah, it is time for me to get out of here, that's for sure. It's my third day at Lone Wolf Mountain. I've enjoyed every minute of it, but I've got to get back to it. I can't imagine that it really snowed much of anything last night, but we will see in just a minute. I hear you. Feel the same way that I do, so. When you're winter camping, the worst part is getting out of your sleeping bag. <laughs> it's just like that one step that's harder than anything else. It's a little bit white, but that's it. It's just a dusting. And that means I have to tell you all a joke. Now what I have here is just a little cloth bag and I keep my toboggan, my gloves, and my face mask in it. And every single time that I take one of these articles off, I put it right back in that bag. Otherwise, I'd lose it. I've lost countless toboggans and gloves over the years. <laughs> and this is the only way that I can keep track of it all. Ah, feels good. <laughs> feels good. Even with the disappointing amount of snow, I've enjoyed this trip. And this is probably something that you've noticed me say, that I've had a good time, I've enjoyed the trip, because I've... I personally enjoy every single trip that I get to go on. Any time that I can spend time in the outdoors, it's a good day. It really is. Let's see, when it comes to my favorite piece of military surplus, oh, probably this sleeping bag. Uh, I, I think I mentioned this already, but it's the Eberly Stock Revly bag. It is super warm. Uh, Carthenia actually makes this. Um, it's a European company. They, basically, it's like a relabel for Epperly stock from what I understand. There were a couple things which I did not get to use, such as this knife, a German snow poncho. I have some military gaiters in here someplace. Didn't need those with a quarter inch of snow outside. <laughs> Alright, so it's time for the uh, joke in regards to the weatherman, meteorologist, whatever. What does a weatherman and a tender date have in common? They say to expect eight inches, but you only get two. <laughs> Sorry. So just about every single meteorologist joke involves his unit. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Mom, Dad, I'm not going to read those. So... Your kids don't have to be scared. My plan pretty much is to have coffee and we'll skip breakfast this morning. I'm going to head down to the bottom of the mountain. 
basically check out the road. I don't know if I can get the truck up here or not. There is some snow. As I mentioned before, this road is steep. So if there's any snow on it, impossible to get up or down. If it's good, I'll bring the truck up, pack everything up, and if not, I'll just load it up and carry it off the mountain. Now one really cool aspect to the Outdoor Gear Review, the channel that I started here, is that I've been able to test out military surplus from all around the world. And that has led me to connections with military contractors and whatnot. I've tested out all sorts of gear which is coming out into the future for the armed forces. Most of it I can't even talk about. I think we'll stop there everyone and we'll finish up my coffee. I'll get my boots on and we'll head down the mountain here. You can come along too if you want to. Let's see what the road looks like. So as you all can see, not much snow. I should be able to get up here just fine. But there is one part of the road that we need to check on. Now, if you're tuning into the channel for your first time, or maybe you haven't seen too many videos, Lone Wolf Mountain is in Western North Carolina along the Tennessee-Virginia border. This is roughly 50 miles away from where I live. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and I think it just may be my favorite place in the universe. I love it. As an outdoors woman or man, if there's one thing that I could preach, it's the one pool knot. So you can see this here. That's it. That is a one pool knot, and that's why I'm able to break down camp in like 10 seconds. In the future, I will show you all how to do that. If you don't know already, you might. Well, everyone, the adventure pretty much ends here. Without a doubt, this has been a lot of fun. And I appreciate you all tuning in. On to the next adventure. Maybe next time we'll actually get some snow. What do you all think? <laughs> Bye.